Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video as to how to factor trinomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. I have a second video um, in the same topic where I'm actually solving the equations, but for right now we are solely factoring. We have a trinomial in this form when a is not 1. Um, so let's see where we go with this. Ready? First of all, the process that I use for factoring trinomials in this form is factor by grouping. I have a factor by grouping video that's also in my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched that yet, you may wanna watch that first before you continue on because that process is really what we use here. Before we do the factor by grouping process, we have to multiply A times C. I don't need to do this process when A is one. I usually do this process when A is not one. But here's my process. I multiply A times C together and I list those factor pairs. I think about all the numbers that multiply to get a times c. I then figure out which one of those factor pairs somehow gets me a sum of b. Kind of very similar to factoring a trinomial where a was 1. You're just looking at what factor pairs of c um, multiply to get c but add up to get b. Now I'm doing a times c. And I'm taking that answer. And I'm seeing what factor pairs of a, c give me a sum of b. Now, let's say I find those values, I'm gonna call them M and P, and I use those two values to rewrite and break apart BX, this one term in the middle, into two terms, MX plus PX. Notice the AX squared stays the same, C will stay the same, but BX gets broken up into MX plus PX. Kind of like the opposite of what we're so used to. We're so used to taking like terms, MX plus PX, and putting them together. Now we're purposely breaking it apart to get a four-term poly. And once we get a four-term polynomial, we factor by grouping. So here's an excellent example of that four-step process. Step one, multiply A times C. So my A and C are two times four, which becomes eight. Factor pairs of eight are one and eight, two and four. I need to determine which factor pair of eight is going to give me a sum of nine. Will it be 1 and 8 or 2 and 4? I think the pretty obvious answer here is 1 and 8, both positive. I need positive 1 and positive 8 to multiply to get 8. I need them both to be positive to add up to 9. So here is the deal. I continue to bring down 2x squared. I rewrite 9x as a positive 1x plus positive 8x. Now that 1 and 8 came from this factor pair here that we chose. 2 times 4 is 8. The factor pair of 8 that adds up to 9 is 1 and 8. I know we don't need this one here. I'm solely using it for educational learning purposes right now, but we both know we could write x. Also, order doesn't matter. I could write it as 8x plus 1x. My factoring is going to look a little different, but my result will finally be the same at the end. And then I bring down my plus 4. So we're purposely turning this trinomial into a four-term poly. And now we factor by grouping. And again, if you followed my factor by grouping uh, video, this will be very simple for us. We have to, <coughs> excuse me, visually separate the first two terms from the second two terms. Just look at the first binomial, 2x squared plus 1x. We need to factor out the GCF. The GCF of those two terms would be x. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 1 is 1x. The GCF of 8x plus 4 would be positive 4. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 1 is 4. We know we're on the right track because we see the twins. Once we see the twins, our factored form are the GCFs, x plus 4. Okay, so the GCF of x and the 4 here go into one binomial, and then one of the twins is the other. And if I was to factor this out, it would bring me back, I'm sorry, distribute this out, it would be bring, bring me back to this. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 1 is 1x. 4 times 2x is 8x. So a 1x plus 8x gives me 9x. And 4 times 1 is 4. I've got, whoops, I've got nine practice problems that we're going to be taking a look at together. If at any time you want to pause so that you can try a problem on your own before I give you the step-by-step -step instruction, please obviously feel free to do so. Okay, first one. 
2 times 2 is 4. My A times my C is 4. Factor pairs of 4 are 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Which one of those factor pairs is going to add up to get 5? 1 and 4. A positive 1, a positive 4. I bring down my 2x squared. I break apart 5x into 1x plus 4x plus 2. I now have a four-term poly. I factor out the GCF of the first two terms, x, 2x plus 1. I factor out the GCF of the second two terms, plus 2, 2x plus 1. I know I'm doing the right job because I see the twins. My GCF of my binomials goes into one parenthesis, x plus 2. My twin is the other. This process is really us just using the distributive property backwards. We're learning what do they have in common, what would have been distributed twice. It's an x and a 2, and it goes into 1. <coughs> Next problem, 3 times 2, a times c. So my ac value is 6. Factor pairs of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Which factor pair of 6 is going to somehow give us a negative 7? If you said negative 1 and negative 6, you are correct. So this would be 3c squared minus 1c minus 6c plus 2. So again, notice we're purposely taking this trinomial. We're forcing it to become a four-term polynomial. We are breaking apart the middle term using the factors that we chose from here. And then we do factor by grouping. GCF of my first two terms here is C. C times 3C is 3C squared. C times negative 1 is negative 1C. Something we have to make sure we do whenever we have a binomial and it starts with a negative, that means we factor out a negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2 in this case to get 3C minus 1. And you'll notice that if you don't factor out a negative, um, you're twins won't be twins. Like this will actually, if I factored out a positive 2 here, this would have then been negative 3c plus 1. And you would have noticed that the terms look similar. They were opposite signs. That's a big indicator that you uh, needed to factor out a negative. c minus 2, 3c minus 1. <coughs> Next one. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So now I just have to be careful. I have to make sure one of my factors is negative. That way it multiplies to get a negative. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Which one of those factor pairs can I somehow, with one of them being negative, get a positive 8 out of? I think we can see it's pretty clear. It's 2 and 10. So 4x squared minus 2x plus 10x. Notice that negative 2x plus 10x would bring us back to positive 8x. The same way 1x plus 4x is 5x, negative 1c minus 6c is negative 7c. We're really just rearranging the term. We're not really doing anything to it except for just purposely breaking it apart. I factor out my GCF of the first two terms. GCF of 4x squared minus 2x would be 2x. Then 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x minus 1 would be my binomial. And GCF of 10x minus 5 is 5. And then I'm left with 2x minus 1. And I have my final form, 2x plus 5, 2x minus 1. Next problem, 6 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. Here are my factor pairs of 36, 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Can you tell which one is going to get us a negative 13? If you said negative 4 and negative 9, you're correct. If these are both negative, they'll add up to get negative 13. And if they're both negative, they will multiply to get positive 36. So 6g squared minus 4g minus 9g plus 6. I factor out my GCF of the first two terms. GCF would be 2G. 2G times 3G and then minus 
2. My next binomial starts with a negative, so remember we factor out a negative in this case. I would factor out a negative 3. And inside my parentheses would be 3g minus 2. Factored form, 2g minus 3, 3g minus 2. 9 times negative 8, negative 72. I factor pairs of negative 72, 1 times 72, 2 times 36, 3 times 24, 4 times 18, 6 times 12, 8 times 9. To get a negative 72, one of them will have to be negative, and they have to then add up to get positive 6. Do you see which factor pair would get me that answer? If you said 6 and 12, you are correct. 9p squared minus 6p plus 12p minus 8. Okay, a negative 6p and a positive 12p will multiply to get, I'm sorry, will add up to get negative 6, and those two numbers will multiply to get that negative 72. First GCF here is 3p. If I factor out of 3p, I'm left with 3p minus 2. Second GCF is a positive 4. If I factor out of 4, I'm left with 3p minus 2. three p plus four, three p minus two. Okay, ten times negative fifteen. Ten times negative fifteen is negative one fifty. Here are all my factor pairs to get to one fifty. If it has to multiply to get a negative, that means one of these terms needs to be negative in order to add up to get a negative nineteen. One and one fifty, no, two and seventy-five, no, three fifty, no, five thirty, no, six and twenty-five. I can get a negative nineteen out of six and twenty-five if my twenty-five is negative and my six is positive. So ten x squared plus six x minus twenty-five x minus fifteen. Again, these two numbers will add up to get negative nineteen. They will multiply to get that negative one fifty. I factor out my GCF. 2x, and then times 5x plus 3. I need to factor out a negative because this next binomial starts with a negative. Negative 5, and then I'm left with 5x plus 3. I see the twins. 2x plus 5 is my first factored form. Part of my factored form, then 5x plus 3. Last three problems. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Ways to get negative 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. I need them to add up to get a positive 3. 1 and 12, nope. 2 and 6, no, close. 3 and 4, no. Actually, none of these will work. None of them will, as long as one of them is negative, actually add up to get a positive 3. This would be considered a trinomial that I couldn't factor with nice integers. Okay, I could not factor this in that way. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have solutions. It just means that I cannot factor it in this process. Next one, 3a squared plus 30a plus 63. Now, something I need to mention, and it really is important for these last two, is that before we go through this process, we kind of need to check to see if there's a GCF. Kind of makes our life a little easier. If I go back, notice, there's no GCF of these original three terms. And that's why our factored form is pretty clean. Like there's nothing I could have factored out of any of these binomials. Because 3, 7, and 2, no GCF. 4, 8, and negative 5, no GCF. And the same thing for these. But again, notice all the factored form is pretty clean. There's nothing I would have factored out going further. But here, 3 is the GCF of these three terms. So if I actually factor out a 3 right from the beginning, I'd be left with a squared plus 10a plus 21. And what I'm actually left with here is a trinomial that I would be able to factor as if I factored the previous trinomials that we learned about where the a value, I'm sorry, where the a value was just one in front. What factor pair multiplies to get 21 that adds up to get 10? One times 21? No. Three times seven? Yeah. And actually look guys, it factors really clean. It's one of those types of trinomials. Imagine the three wasn't there. It just kind of gets brought down. Same thing here. My GCF of these three terms would be a two. 
But in this case, I'm actually still left with one of those trinomials that I have to do the process with. 3n squared plus 5n plus 2. I still have to do my process. This is not one of these types of trinomials because my a value is 3. 3 times 2, a times c is 6. I have to pick the factor pair that gets me 5. Do not get tricked by 1 and 6. If you pick 1 and 6, you need a negative 1 and a positive 6. But then if you multiply a negative 1 and a positive 6, you don't get a positive 6 here. So we need 2 and 3. What kind of 2 and 3 will add up to get 5? Both positive. See how this 3 that got factored out just gets brought down? This is the same for this 2. Kind of think about it as that person that's kind of hanging outside of the group. They always just kind of hang there. That's what that 2 is going to do. We are just worried about this trinomial, breaking it apart, and doing our process. So that 2 hangs. I factor out my GCF of this first binomial, n. Then I've got 3n plus 2. GCF here. Notice they don't have anything in common except for 1. Everything has a factor at 1. 3n plus 2. My final factored form would be 2. n plus 1. So here's my 2. n plus 1 are my GCFs. And then 3n plus 2 is one of my twins. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I factor this way. This is the way I love the most. And hopefully you found these problems to be successful in your learning. Thanks.